question 4 now this may seem like a long complicated question and it actually is but it's not really that difficult so let's start with taking a random variable x uh, this random variable is for the total score but now I'm going to break this random variable into 30 other random variables each random variable in itself would be the score for a particular question now a thing to note here is that all x size are actually identically and independently distributed what it means is that my score in one question is independent of my score in another question this holds true for both the students right so now my expected value of x that is the expected value of the total score is going to be the expected value of the sum of these and this can be broken down into individual expected values and since x i's are random variables it's just going to be 30 times the expected value of any one of those so let's say expected value of x1 so the total expected value for both the students is 30 times the expected value of the first question also we are given the probabilities of each answer being correct so let me write that down here probability of c being correct is 0.2 and probability of d being correct is 0 notice how these probabilities sum to 1 that is the entire sample space can be divided in these four options where d is just zero so d won't come up in the sample space in the Venn diagram right so let's let's now talk about goopy let's start the discussion with goopy now if i figure out what is the expected score of goopy in the first question i would be able to figure out what is what is her total expected score right so i am going to use something called the law of total expectations law of total expectations just breaks down the entire problem into simpler parts right so we don't really know what the correct answer is what exactly is the correct answer we are just given the probabilities that it is a with probability 0.5 b with 0.3 c with 0.2 and it's similar d right so i am not sure which one is the correct answer i just know the probability distribution of that that is the reason why i need to use the law of expected law of total expectations so i am going to condition it i am going to condition gopi's marks in the first question on which is the correct answer right so i am writing gopi's expected marks conditioning on if b is the correct answer and then i am going to multiply it with the probability of b being the correct answer right so on and so forth y is equal to c times probability that c is the correct option and finally expected score given that y that the correct answer is d times the probability that d is the correct answer okay so this right here is now my new problem i need to figure out what these values are now i have already conditioned on the fact that a is the correct answer okay so i have assumed that a is the correct answer if i know a is, is the correct answer and if i pick that option i would score four marks this is given in the question right but gopi is just randomizing each question randomizing the choices so she would choose a with the probability one by four and if she chooses b she would get zero and she does this with the probability 1 by 4 again she chooses c with the probability 1 by 4 and d with the probability 1 by 4 again so this is her total expected score if we know that a is the correct option right so this this thing is this bracket now i need to know what is the probability of a of a being the correct option that is also given in the question to be 0.5 plus the second bracket this second term is just her expected score if we know that b is the correct option now this is going to be similar to the first bracket right the value would be same but the calculation is a bit different so we have four in the second term here when she chooses b she gets four 
and she chooses B with 0.25. And now what is the probability that of B being the correct option? It's 0.3. Similarly, the third bracket would have the same numerical value, but we would multiply it with 0.2. And for this, this, this term is zero. So I'm not going to write it down here. Each bracket is in itself equal to one. So I just need to sum up 0.5 plus 0.3 plus 0.2, which is again one. So Gopi's expected score is 30 times the expected score in the first question, which just turns out to be one. So total expected score is 30. This is for Gopi, right? So we found the expected score for Gopi. Now we are also interested in finding the expected score for Baga. Now Baga is a bit different than Gopi. Baga either attempts a question or he does not. So it's like he tosses a coin and then decides if he's going to attempt the question or not. So there is a 50% chance that he is going to attempt the question and there is a 50% chance that he's not going to attempt the question. So her, his expected score for the first uh, question could be conditioned on the fact if he attempts the question or not. So I am interested. So I'm going to condition it on if he is going to attempt the question times the probability of attempting the question and if he is not going to attempt the question. So he's not going to attempt the question times the probability of not attempting the question. Okay, so he Okay, so let's tackle the first part here. This term here is telling me what is the expected score of Baga if I know that he is going to attempt the question. Now this is very, very much, uh, so let's tackle the first part here. What this is saying is expected score given that we know that he has attempted the question. And since Baga also just randomly chooses each, each question, each part, his expected score, given that he attempts a question, is just going to be one, right? This, this one here, right here. The calculations would turn out to be the exact same because he also does not know which answer is the correct one and he randomizes them if he attempts a question. Times the probability of attempting the question is 0.5. Plus, now what's the expected score given that we know he does not attempt the question. Now, if, if I'm going to uh, not attempt the question, my expected score is going to be one. Uh, that's also given in the question. Times the probability that I don't attempt the question is again 0.5. So this turns out to be one again. So Baga's total expected score is 30 times expected value of x1, which is again, 30. this is for Baga. So if you leave the question with a probability of 50% or if you attempt it with a probability of 50%, your expected score is the same. So it turns out that both the strategies would yield you the same expected score. So that is why the answer for this question is option D.